All right, we'll get started momentarily. Thank you as you're joining. All right, so welcome to this presentation on ways to save energy and maximize productivity. I'm Laura, I'm a law practice advisor for Lawyers Concerned for Lawyers. With me today will be my colleagues, Barbara Bowe and afterwards, Louis Carrion, who just joined. We wanted to give this presentation for those of you that are both live and that will be watching later on demand. We worked in conjunction with the Berkshire Bar on this and wanna thank them for their support as they came to us um, for help and guidance on how law practice management and well-being are so important for lawyers. So with this, get started here to give you a quick roadmap of where we're going. First, we're gonna talk about LCL. We're gonna highlight some of our resources. We're gonna talk about digital files and dealing with documents, then tech tips, and then I will turn it over to my colleagues. Why am I talking to you today? I have a wide background in uh, legal environments, and I'm familiar with the solo and small firm practitioners, um, since I know that's what many in the Berkshire Bar are, being on the MBA Section Council. One of the main things we wanna to talk to you today is about the value to you that's available through LCL services. This includes practice management services and much more. So as you may or may not know, Lawyers Concerned for Lawyers is the Lawyer Assistance Program in Massachusetts. It is free and confidential and we have both consultations and resources available. Topics that we support range on everything from career and practice management to addiction recovery, well being, stress and resilience, and mental health. I want to give you a heads up since most of you may know us as Mass Lomap. That was one of our primary brands before about the Massachusetts Law Office Management Assistance Program. We are now more squarely under the Lawyers Concerned for Lawyers umbrella. We just want to let you know it's all connected as part of your lawyer's assistance program for Massachusetts. With our Maslow map, we have a number of resources that are available on a website, everything from law practice management to legal tech and data to starting up a law practice. We also have a number of support groups, and we also want to emphasize on how people that come to us for practice management will sometimes see that the other parts of all house have a lot of value for them as well. For example, the Solo Stress Connection Group or the Super Mom Support Group. For the practice management consultations, we cover a wide variety of topics, everything from marketing, technology, business planning, billing, finance, time management, productivity, organization, and so forth. And you have the option if you'd like to do a 20 minute or a 60 minute consultation. I will note that there are many different ways you can connect with LCL. Right now, we're in the process of integrating all websites. Currently, there are still two websites which are chock full of resources, both lclma.org, that stands for Lawyers Concerned for Lawyers Massachusetts.org, and masslomap.org, that stands for Massachusetts Law Office Management Assistance Program. We also wanna note that the LCLMA Connect online community recently launched. And this is a page that shows um, what that is if you'd like to get connected with this online community. From here, I want to highlight some of the resources that we have in LCL practice management. There's a wide variety of articles, videos, startup kits that we have. And so I'm gonna pull out some popular ones for you. First of all, all of these are available on demand on a website. We have topics uh, related directly to law practice management, such as the integration of technology and law practice, paperless practices, practice management software. And we also run a monthly webinar for busy lawyer series. These are every month. They're usually uh, 30 minute talks followed by up to 30 minutes of question and answer. And some of the ones that you may be interested in and are available on demand in all archives are low cost and practical tools for increasing efficiency, practical time management tips, generating referrals from clients and other attorneys. And I also wanna connect on how we bring in our resources 
across LCL. So sometimes we'll have our clinicians that we work with on these webinars for busy lawyers, such as my colleague, Dr. Sean did this one, improving sleep, about sleep hygiene. And sometimes we'll work with them in consultation. It's really a best bang for your buck to get a wide variety of legal services for you all through your lawyer assistance program. Other resources that we have, which are popular and on demand, we have a lot about starting up a law practice. There's a two hour workshop. There's also a guide. If you have questions that um, you'd like more individualized than what you can find in the on-demand resources, we encourage you to schedule individual, individual consultations. They're free, they're confidential. That's a point where you can go through what's on your mind. Sometimes attorneys are very stressed about something. They're not quite sure how to term it. And so we can work with you as both law practice advisors and with clinicians as well and help form words for the pain points in your practice and support you with guidance and resources on how we can go forward with them. And here are the links for if you'd like to schedule a consultation. There are a range of topics that we cover. Some of the popular ones relating to practice management are everything from starting up a law firm, closing down a law firm, marketing and business development, uh, technology, billing, uh, career development, and so forth. If it relates to how you're starting your practice, growing your practice, closing down your practice, or wanna make your practice more efficient, come and talk to us. I also want to give a note on the scope of all services. So we cannot give legal advice and we cannot make and implement decisions for you, but we can offer consultation and guidance and we can shine a light on obstacles that you're going through and help point you to relevant resources that you may not know about. One area of law practice management that works regardless of what practice era you may have, is the importance of using organized digital files. We'll go through first on why these are so important. If you haven't made the switch, this really is no longer just an option. This is a best practice. You need to commit to using digital files and going more paperless. With paperless, that doesn't mean you need to have no paper, but you should be saving your case files electronically so that they are digitally accessible and organized. You don't wanna have reams and reams of paper all over your office or all over your basement that you can't put your fingers on at any point. With this, digital files will also make it a lot easier for you to practice rather than trying to reuse parts of word processing file, which has dangers because it may have been client specific or you may have to retype something. You may have to think about um, blocking out past clients' names and information. If you have digital files and also digital templates, they can be easily searched with full text search. Um, you have instant access. It's a lot quicker and easier to search through digital files than it is to search through paper files. This will also be less expensive for you. I've talked to so many attorneys that have multiple uh, file storage, sometimes multiple bank accounts, storage locations, and this is a lot not only simpler, but also cheaper for you if you can have your file storage uh, managed digitally rather than trying to do everything in paper. You won't have to rent um, all that file space and you won't have all that time and looking for lost files or lost documents and your time is important. I also want you to think about safety because if you only are keeping your files in paper, you need to think about what would happen if something happened to your client files, maybe a nor'easter, maybe a fire, maybe a flood. You need to protect this and safeguard this important information. So you really need to take steps to back up your data. And a great way to do that is by having digital records plus digital backups. You may say, I don't know how to do this. How do I deal with my documents such that I can have my case files more electronic? 
Well, even if you're getting in paper files from the court or from the client, you want to save them all immediately and digitally. Every document, everything that is part of your case file should be digitized. You want to know in your electronic calendar when you have appointments and hearings coming up. You want to keep a list of your tasks. You want to know your deadlines and have reminders. I will note that if you still like to do handwriting, I know a lot of attorneys find it their preference rather than typing, you can use tools to make it helpful, such as Rocketbook, where you can write into the notebook and then they have codes in the corner where you can scan it to set file locations. But the main thing is you wanna save your client files, you wanna save them in consistent locations so that you know where everything is, all of your documents, all of your upcoming deadlines, all of your appointments and tasks. With this, once you do so, you will ensure the accuracy and the completeness of the case file. It will be readily accessible. You won't have to think, oh gosh, was this in paper or was this something I scanned or I didn't? If you scan it all in when you get it, or if you have it electronically to begin with, if you save it as that record, you will know where it is and that it's readily accessible. It's also a lot easier to share your documents with clients electronically. There, um, for example, client portals are built into most law practice management software now. That is an encrypted secure pan, uh, portal, much like you may be familiar with for using a bank portal for your own personal accounts, where you can communicate back and forth with your client, with messages, with sending files and so forth. This will also help you automate the workflow because let's say that you're, you are using a client portal, then it is already connected to the client matter in your law practice management system. It will be a lot easier to have your accurate complete case files. I will note too that there are some foundations of law practice management and we promised as you were coming today that part of it would be tech tips. So for this, I will note first that when you think about foundations for your tech needs, part of why you can come to us is we can help you become informed consumers, understand the landscape. We are not connected with any vendors, we give independent advice. And so we can really help you become more informed consumers about what technology is important in legal offices. And that all depends on what your individual practice looks like. To give a large scale view, some things that you are going to want to spend money on are a good computer, backup, reliable internet, and so forth. You don't have to go after the shiny new thing. And also you want to keep your work computer separate from your private life. If you're using the same computer for both, at least have your accounts segregated so that you are not having client files available to anyone who's not in your office. With this too, another tech tip I will talk about is best practices for security. These next two tips for security will relate to password managers and multi-factor authentication. So password managers assist in many ways, as you may or may not be familiar with, some sites will have you change your password, say every 30 days, you know that you have to have unique passwords for every account and you may think, oh, how do I keep track of this all? Password managers is how you do it. It's how you can have different unique passwords for different sites. They will auto-generate complex passwords for you. It's a lot easier for you to remember and they also have um, better features that are maybe important to you like secure storage. So I will note, if you can have a password manager, you can come to us too if you'd like assistance on that. It really is going to help you in password protecting your files and not reusing your passwords over and over, which can be dangerous because if that password is compromised and you're using it on multiple sites, then you, um, you know, have that, that compromise across your site. So you just want to be careful. Another best practice tip for security is that you want to use two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication. 
you may not know what that is. And so I will note too, if you don't know about topics, you can come to us or you can look in tech dictionaries. This for example, is the sideways dictionary. So two-factor authentication, they liken this to Cinderella's slipper. So it has to be a verified person to know that the, the information where it's going and the person who's receiving it is a fit, the lock and the key. If you have two-factor authentication on different accounts, I would greatly recommend that you turn it on. Turning on multi-factor authentication can stop its estimated 99% a brute force attacks. Our next tech tips will be on products that are probably familiar for you. We'll start with some Apple and then go to Microsoft as these are very common for a lot of attorneys. So first, if you are running low on your phone and you are almost out of battery, if you switch to airplane mode, this will help um, from your battery from draining. It will also prevent the phone from ringing. So it's a quick way if you don't want to go through and um, put on the low, pattern, low power battery mode and do not disturb. This is another way you can do it. If you're using your iPhone a lot and you want to have a cursor, maybe you've typed something and you want to go back and add in, you can um, select the text and add in uh, to, to press firmly on it to get to the cursor function. If you're somebody that still is working on, you really like handwriting, you're thinking, okay, I want to go to more digital files. I have an iPad, how can I use it for that? There are applications such as MyScript Stylus and others where you can write in with your handwriting and it will convert it to text recognizable, um, which is searchable later. As for Microsoft, if there are options that you're using frequently and you want to save time by having fewer clicks, you can customize your quick access toolbar and your status bar. And this way you can choose the popular commands that you're using and put them up on that quick access toolbar. If you're using Microsoft Word a lot, Microsoft Styles will save you a lot of time with formatting. And this is an, um, one place that you can go for tutorials on styles. If you're subscribing to Microsoft 365, which many people are, you may not be aware of all of the tech products that come with your subscription. So I would encourage you to check it out because if you need say a task tool, a planning tool, a web conferencing tool, and you have Microsoft 365, you probably already have the applications available in your subscription and you may just not be making available of them. So this is a link up here to compare Microsoft 365 business products and then they go through what each application does. If you'd like more training on Microsoft, they have a wonderful wealth of resources on their website. This is their support landing page. From there, you can go into learning about different applications or certain features or functionalities that you wanna use. If you also are on social media and you'd like to get connected with office tips those ways, there's a Facebook group, Office for Lawyers, as well as options on LinkedIn um, to learn about it there. I will be turning this over to my colleague in just a moment. I will say some takeaways from today are that practice management relates to well being, and that if you are having better practices in your work, you will be less stressed. It will connect to your well being, vice versa. If you are not taking care of yourself, this, that stress is probably going to come over to your practice and start affecting all of it. So, Keep in mind your well being. I will say, utilize tech. It can make you far more efficient. If you are unfamiliar with some of these tools, there's a lot of training opportunities available. Resources are available too. Um, the LCL is here for you for law practice management and much more. I want to note too that we practice management is just part of LCL services. We really work in concert with each other. And so with this, I wanna turn it over to my colleague, Barbara Bowe, um, to talk some more about the value of LCL services. 
Thank you. Thanks, Laura. I want to just drag this over here. Hold on. So hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to um, our first launch of Berkshire County in terms of the combination of services between the, the mental health, the clinical side of the house at LCL and the law office management side of the house. Um, just before we get going, I, I just sort of want to want to give a commentary because Laura and I decided that we would do this together because oftentimes we see lawyers together in consultation because oftentimes we find that if a lawyer is having a struggle some way, shape or form in terms of their practice life, it oftentimes is mirrored in their personal lives. So we really see there's a huge benefit in being able to combine services um, for, the, for, for the lawyer's uh, desire to problem solve, deal more effectively, find other ways to cope, manage, and deal with a situation or a client or a matter that they oftentimes feel stuck with. So today, we're going to try and, and sort of gear the presentation to talking about, Laura did a great job on talking about all the technology, of which is not my lane. Thank you for that. Because, because I'm not well suited for it. But I am, um, I have been at LCL for a very long time, since 1996. I see a, a lot of um, law students. I work with a lot of lawyers and have run a combination of different specialty groups over the years. And one of the groups that I've run for the last 18 years is a group for lawyers that get into trouble with the BBO. So there's complaints, there's concerns. Um, sometimes there's discipline that occurs. And, and these are folks that I've worked with fairly uh, intensely for a number of years. So I feel that my work at the LCL provides a really nice arc between working with law students who are very early in their career, um, as well as folks that have been in practice for a good period of time and folks that have run into trouble in terms of their practice lives and need to retool, rework, and, and sort of shore up and tighten up some practice management issues that might have put them on the radar screen at the BBO to begin with. So today we're going to talk about all the secrets to supercharge your life and practice. And I love this legal disclaimer. This contains no secrets, is not an exhaustive list, and supercharging anything might be dangerous. <laughs> this is a this is um, uh, a presentation that my colleague um, Sean Healy did um, in Hamden County, and I thought it was so good, and it has so much sort of good tongue and cheek material in there that I thought at the end of the day, can't we all benefit from um, a little a little humor? So as Laura already mentioned. We work, we are the, the legal assistance program for the Commonwealth. So we work with lawyers, students, judges, and, and everyone engaged in the legal community. Um, the important thing to understand about our services, right, is that your bar dues um, provide us the ability to be able to see you for free and confidentially in terms of our consultations, our offering of resources and referrals. And so I really think about this program as unique in the context of this is something that people can utilize from their law school days right up through practice and into retirement. And if you seriously think about it, there are not that many programs um, like us. I mean, even though every jurisdiction has some sort of lawyer assistance program, I can tell you that we are by far above and beyond um, the pale in terms of what other jurisdictions offer. So we want you to really think about us in the context of this is a program that is available to you. You support it. You help pay for it. Um, and you can use it throughout um, this, the extent of your, your legal career and practice life. And we're also available if you have um, significant others, partners family members that you think might utilize, be able to utilize our services, we're open to that too. So we're, we're well situated in that we have the clinical side of the house, my side of the house per se, um, 
that deals with sort of the mental health, stress, life challenges, coping, mindfulness, a whole host of issues. All of us in the clinical side of the house, myself included, have been in practice for a very long time um, and are really quite expert in our ability to understand the intersection between law practice management and personal and relational lives. And then oftentimes the stress that comes along with that. So we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about you as a smartphone metaphor. So um, I want you to think about this. How are you similar to your phone battery? Activity drains your power source. More taxing multiple activities drain it faster. Regular recharging is required. And I think this makes absolutely perfect sense. And to be able to look at this breakout through the context of the battery, I think is actually quite helpful. So a lot of activity drains your power source. The more taxing or the multiple activities you try to pull off at one time drains it faster. And regular recharging is required. So how are you dissimilar? You can't recharge while you are also maintaining the same output. So think about that. Just think about how much sense that makes, right? And how oftentimes as lawyers, you don't really think about that, right? You're, you're sort of like the Energizer Bunny. Um, you're good with being able to show up, um, execute, problem solve, um, be creative in how you're going to approach a matter or a client or how you're going to thread the needle in terms of getting a decent result for your client. And it's sort of like, think about that. You can't recharge while you're also maintaining the same output. Um, and this is a way to sort of prevent against becoming crispy, burned out, um, and sometimes get into sort of that really negative hole in terms of the work and the pace and the demands that people can place on you. You don't have an icon to tell you how much longer your battery will last. Think about that, right? Think about the, like the last time you took a break. Think about the last time you said no. Think about the last time you sort of drew a line in the sand where you let you let a mat, you let the opportunity to take on a new matter go because you, you neither number one you were too busy you didn't have the bandwidth or the 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 matter at hand was not really within your lane in terms of expertise. You don't suddenly shut off when you are in need of a recharge. And think about that, right? In the context of burnout can be the result when you're not tuned into, aware of, conscious of how far out there on the skinny branches you become. And, and it's a really important thing about this, right? And, and my hope is that Berkshire County Bar and your colleagues out there are really helpful and supportive in terms of helping you navigate, look at ways to problem solve and decrease the amount of stress um, and, 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 and practice management issues that you're struggling with. So let's talk about strategies to maintain stamina. In the, face, in the face of all these things we just talked about in terms of how the battery gets depleted, it's three main things we're gonna talk about here. And there's more than three, but we're just gonna highlight these three. Awareness of what drains your battery. Now think about this. Think about um, if you have more energy going out than you have coming in, something's gotta give. And my experience on working with, with lawyers over the years is that oftentimes it's the lawyer that winds up doing the giving, not necessarily other things, right? And so, you know, our, our intent here is to help you be able to recognize 
the stresses, the strains, and the way you're managing or struggling to manage those things, right? So techniques for efficient battery use, really learning how to preserve the battery, learning how to identify those things that really work for you, those things that help you to sort of turn off from the day's events or the day's work, um, those things that, that give you the freedom and the power to transition into other parts of your life where, where you understand yourself as a person who happens to be a lawyer, not a lawyer who happens to be a person. The difference in terms of understanding those two things is really critical and important. And oftentimes, Laura and I will see lawyers in consultation who get that goofed up, who are really driven by what they do and how oftentimes that really takes them that really takes them to places that are not so helpful, not so healthy, and really sort of um, binds them up in terms of feeling good about the practice that they're trying to manage. Utilizing multiple well-being practices in an attempt to recharge your battery. So it's really important to be able to know when and how to take yourself off the clock, um, to be able to value your own time, your own space, and take care of yourself in ways you need to, so you can actually can provide really good legal practice for the clients that you serve. I think um, my experience over the years uh, of working with lawyers is that, you know how when you get on the plane and when you're traveling, right? And the um, they come on and they say, look, you know, if the cabin loses pressure, don't forget, put your own mask on first. Um, and people really are, are so used to that. They're kind of numb to that as a reminder, but, but it's really good information because if you don't find ways to take good, or better care of yourself, then you're gonna become a liability in terms of what you do. Because you can't maintain you know, high energy, high output with no break in sight. Um, it's really important to understand that there's an ebb and a flow in terms of whatever your practice area is and your ability to recognize that and work with that is really important in the context of longevity in terms of practice, right? So we want to really think about this. We call this the practice of law, which means that this is something that requires kind of an ongoing commitment to. So Laura spoke before me about all the, um, the technology that either you can you know, incorporate, utilize, learn about in order to make your practice sort of more um, productive, more successful in a way. And it's gonna require a certain amount of retooling. It's gonna require a certain amount of education. It's gonna require for some people a real willingness to say, I need help here. I'm not really sure how to implement this. I'm not really sure I'm gonna be that great with trying to communicate with clients or process matters electronically or digitally or whatever. And so your willingness to sort of raise your hand and ask for help is really important in terms of taking some of the stress out of your life and your practice. And we know this, right now, we know that lawyers that are highly stressed in terms of their practice life have stress in other parts of their lives as well. It's oftentimes not contained to the office or to the matters at hand. So it's really, it's really important to give yourself kind of um, sort of a hall pass in some ways in, in terms of thinking about the fact that if you're gonna stay in the practice of law, you have to really be able to accept somewhere along the line that you need to be a good student in terms of the shifts, the changes, and the constant um, new demands that are sometimes placed on practice life. Um, 
So being careful and mindful and aware of the battery drain, learning how to preserve your battery and really paying good attention and creating ways to recharge the battery are really important. And I cannot um, underscore highlight and um, bold that enough. So in terms of recharging your battery, we think about this in a kind of a multimodal way. It's not just um, one aspect or one area. So it's about your physical well-being. It's about how well you take care of yourself. Do you sleep well enough? Do you eat well enough? Do you have enough good exercise to be able to blow off steam and stress from the day? Um, how well connected are you in understanding how your mind and body influence the way you think, feel, and oftentimes determine what your outlook um, and what your perspective is on your practice life as well as your personal life. Your psychology, how well you manage stress, how well you respond to stress. You know, the, the important thing about stress is that oftentimes people don't realize that people experience it, the same stress differently. And it really depends a lot on things related to resi resilience, how, um, how well you respond to challenge and adversity, how well you feel you're capable to manage transitions and difficult patches, right? So, so the more you feel you have the skill set, you have the capacity, you have the know-how, you have the drive and determination to deal with whatever issue you're confronted with, you're going to be successful with. There are folks lots of times who might feel overwhelmed with the stress at hand based on where they're giving in other parts of their lives, or maybe um, typically you deal really well with stress, but right now your mother-in-law is living with you and she's got Alzheimer's, or your kids are sick, or there's some major mental health, physical, medical challenge that's going on in your typical family support system that's draining your battery some and you find yourself a little short-tempered, a little irritated, a little internally distracted at work, not on your game as well as typically you are, it's a really good time. Pick up the phone, shoot an email, ask to talk to somebody, to just be able to download that stress, get a handle, get a perspective, maybe find um, some new or different ways of coping, and responding to that kind of stress. And the, and the final piece here is social. The importance, and, and certainly, you know, on the heels of COVID, we have all been in this situation where um, unless you live with a, a good supportive group of people, family or otherwise, the, the stress of not having contact with people, um, not being in the office, not seeing people, not being able to touch base with people, socialize, relax, have easy times. It's, we realize, um, thanks to COVID, the value and the importance of being able to maintain those connections um, as a way to fill us up in terms of our energy, our ability to be hopeful, to be resilient, and to, and to realize that we're not alone in some of the struggles and some of the things that we're trying to confront and deal with. So again, we come down to the value in being able to know yourself, to be able to really understand what helps to motivate you, um, what gets you out of bed in the morning, what, what helped to um, identify for you, this is a practice area you wanna be in, um, hopefully it's an area you feel really that you have a certain expertise in, that you're really good with, that you really know well, um, and, and that's reflected in the clients you have and in the referrals that come your way, either from um, clients that have been successful in their ventures with you or colleagues that think highly of you. What distracts you? What do you find that... Um, 
that kind of like interferes with your ability to be focused, to be concentrated, um, to be sort of on top of your game. One of the things that, that certainly Laura and I have spoken with lawyers about over the years is the struggle around procrastination um, and avoidance. Uh, and sometimes it manifests in the context of the actual um, case material or case matters that you might feel is a bit of a stretch or an area that you might have some knowledge, but you're not particularly expert in, um, where you might have said yes to helping a client, where in reality you should have referred that client. Um, and so what happens sometimes is that lawyers wind up putting certain materials at the bottom of the heap um, where you're, you're not so quick to return phone calls. You're not so quick to um, give clients the update on their matters and the progress or lack thereof or where things are. And, and my take on this from seeing enough lawyers over the years is that Things related to avoidance or um, procrastination, the common denominator, the baseline issue is fear. Either fear that I, as the practicing lawyer, that I'm going to need to give client bad news, that um, what I thought we were going to be able to do in terms of the um, case matter is not going to happen as I described it might. Um, that maybe I even made a mistake with something um, that I need to own in terms of informing the client about. So, so the important thing about this is those things that you find yourself wanting to put on the bottom of the pile, I'll look at later. Um, I'll deal with Mrs. So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so later. If you would be willing to create a habit, and this is really, again, a practice, right? Create a habit where you deal with those things first and foremost and directly, you would be amazed at the amount of freedom you would feel with that. So I want you to think about that, right? So. So procrastination, avoidance, oftentimes creates tremendous stress in the lawyer's life because in their mind, they know, oh, I should, I should take care of this matter. I should attend to this, but they don't. And so over time, little by slow, that creates really issues around conflicts of confidence or um, struggles around self-esteem sometimes or um, just general fear around what if, what if the client gets mad? What if the client gets disappointed? What if, um, what if the matters don't go to plan as I hoped they would? So your ability to deal with that stuff straight up and more directly is going to provide such a relief for you um, that will, you will only know and experience as you do it. Um, how do you respond to discomfort? This is another important thing, kind of goes with avoidance and procrastination. So my, my experience with lawyers is that when, let's say, a client brings a matter to you or an issue, or there's a, um, a new client that you have who presents with um, a case material or an issue. And in some way, you feel funny about it. You feel funny about the client. You feel like, hmm, I don't know that I'm getting the whole story here. I don't know that this is actually what they're telling me is exactly what went on or what happened. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to that, that instinct you have that sends up an early warning signal um, or the client who says, you know, you're like the third lawyer I talked to about this um, or the client who has fired the two prior lawyers before he or she got to you. Pay attention to that, right? And, and also in, instead, of, instead of kind of um, 
pathologizing discomfort, right? Instead of thinking discomfort is an indicator that there's something wrong, maybe discomfort is just is just there in place to help you look at something that you're not paying good enough attention to. So, so discomfort actually can be kind of a good early warning signal, um, can be um, a way to help you pay attention to something that you're kind of not. And, in, and, it, and being willing to sit with that oftentimes, I think can be really helpful, right? Because sometimes things are not so black and white, right? The law is more gray than not. And so your ability to kind of pay attention to how you respond, think, feel about something, I think is valuable and noteworthy and shouldn't be like put under the rug. It's a good, it's a good time to talk to somebody, get another opinion, have um, maybe have a, um, a colleague that you trust, that you can share things with to sort of get a firm handle on why you feel the way you feel. What changes would indicate distress? <laughs> so again, this is about being able to, this is about being able to talk to people about a situation or a struggle or a position that you might feel that you're sort of stuck in. I, I was I was speaking to a lawyer the other day and um, I asked him a question about how willing he was to be open to ask for help. He was kind of in a pickle over a couple of things and he really needed to be able to get out of his own way and ask for help. And I said to him, um, how ready or, or how, would you, how would you identify your readiness to be able to ask for help? And are you good at being able to do that? Right. And he looked at me, he said, I don't know. And I said, what if I asked your wife that? And he laughed and he had an answer from his wife's perspective. He had an answer. So I think sometimes, you know, lawyers are such good problem solvers. I mean, you're trained to be problem solvers. Um, but sometimes you need help in unpacking what the issue is. And you really need to have people you can go to, whether it's family or it's friends, whether it's another lawyer and say, hey, what do you think about this? Am I on the money with this? Am I not on the money with this? It's always really good to be able to identify your distress and ask for help around it. So inefficient efforts. This again, this is, this is really good material to think about for yourself, right? Trying to control what is outside of your control. And think about that, how often that gets you in trouble. Um, the, the desire to try to manage and control things that are outside your control really lead to a big enhancement in terms of stress, a lot of worry, a lot of angst, um, depending on how often and how frequently you try to do this can lead to some burnout, right? If you're a person that really, really strives to be perfect, whether it's in practice life, personally or whatever, ooh, that's gonna cause a lot of stress and that's gonna cause um, a lot of tension in your life. And it's something that you really need to think about because perfectionism is not really attainable when we think about this as a practice, right? Whether you're what we talk about this is the practice of law, this is not perfection, right? This is about doing the best you can with what you have available on a daily basis. Fear of failure keeps people stuck. Fear of failure really interferes with um, your ability to make a decision, your ability to move on, your ability to cut your losses your ability to be resilient, your ability to bounce back. Inability to maintain boundaries um, is exhausting. So I remember one time I was talking to a lawyer and did criminal defense work. And he told me that he got a call on a Sunday morning at 6 a.m. from a client, his personal, you know, his personal iPhone. 
And I said to him, I said, what is the message that I said, did you answer the phone? And he said, yes. And I said, what is the message that you sent the client that morning? And he looked at me and I said that you have no life, right? So unless this is about surgery for an organ donation, I think it's really important to think about where you're going to draw the line and how you're going to teach clients how to access your practice, right? You have to teach the client where the limit lies, what your availability is in order to be in charge of your practice and not have the clients in charge of the practice. Trying to do too much multitasking is so um, overly endorsed. You really can't do it. I hate to say that, but you really can't do it. Your, your ability to try and do, be a one arm paper hanger and do 10 things at one time doesn't produce very good results. Running on empty, um, the scarcity mindset in terms of always feeling like not enough, right? Sometimes we come, we come from situations where we grew up in families where we got the message, there's not enough. There's not enough to go around. There's not enough emotional support. There's not enough um, psychological support. And, and so people really kind of get good at not being able to ask for too much. And I think this is really the third rail in some respects in terms of practice life. It's really important to look at that. Uh, or lack, like as Laura spoke earlier, lack of organization or good systems in place, right? To be helpful to you. Um, so during hectic times, uh, which certainly we have just been through in the last three years, um, it's important to be intentional, to consciously choose what needs to be put on hold for now, right? What you don't need to attend to, be engaged in, do business with right now. Have a time frame in mind about what you can get to, when you can get to it, um, and be able to communicate that to clients, colleagues, whomever you're, in, you're, um, you're working with. Preserve what is necessary for well-being. To not be too quick to give away that which is really important for you. So the ability to set boundaries, say no, stay in your lane in terms of practice matters. Ask for help. Um, be able to have people who are good consults for you. Um, be open to the idea that this is a practice and that you're constantly learning things about yourself, things about new matters, ways to operate in more efficient, successful ways. Um, and that's it for me. Barb, uh, that was brilliant. You always have such wonderful words of wisdom. You have helped so many hundreds of attorneys over your career and your, your knowledge is just incredible and um, your intuition and insights are spot on. Thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. I will note too that if you have questions um, or comments, we invite you to put them in the chat or the Q&A. Just note that uh, because this is being recorded, if you have a private question that might be better for an individual consult, um, I just would want to advise you on that. In the meantime, I also want to uh, ask our colleague Luz, who recently joined LCL, um, if she would like to talk and give some feedback on this um, from her perspective. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I cannot, my camera is not working. I don't know what's going on. My apologies. That That's okay. We, we would love to hear your thoughts if you okay. have some. Yes, absolutely. Uh, first of all, thank you. This is my first presentation with LCL. Um,
<laughs> so this is a this is a live time in terms of, in terms of dealing with the stress. Of but but I'm excited that to be in great company. Barbara and Laura are great resources, so I encourage everyone uh, to contact us and, and use our resources. So a quick recap that I wanted to give. Um, going back to the strategies to maintain uh, stamina, I would recommend that uh, if you can, um, do, uh, write down your top three uh, things or situations that drain your battery. Uh, if you cannot do that, um, ask a colleague or a friend, a family member, or call us and we can go through this together. But um, identify at least the top three things or situations that drain your battery. Uh, then let's tackle each one and, and let's see what really uh, do you need to, in order to address that um, drain of your battery. Do you need technology? Laura is great with that. Uh, do we need uh, a little bit of counseling and focus? Um, Barbara and, and the clinicians are also great with that. Um, I also would like to circle back to the slide on inefficient efforts um, and see if that's something that you do and you can tie it to your top three uh, draining things. And let's develop a plan to address that. Um, like I said, it could be something about boundaries like uh, Barbara said. So do we want to address that from the beginning of the client representation? Uh, that's the best way to do it um, so that everybody has clear expectations. Um, going back also to Barbara's mentioning about um, consciously choosing what, um, what needs to be put on hold. I can tell you that's very difficult to do. Uh, for me, it wasn't until after the pandemic that I began to realize that you need that um, skill and you need to be intentional about that. So it has taken me, well, about three years to be intentional and, and consciously choosing what needs to be put on hold mm -hmm. and then focus at something uh, that has an immediate need and do not multitask like Barbara said. <laughs> Uh, it never works, never works. Um, um, and then, uh, like I uh, said earlier, and I wanted to wrap up with this, if you need to talk to us, uh, we're here for you. We can sit down with you and develop a plan to uh, tackle these um, things that are draining your battery. Um, we also need um, the multiple well-being practices, like Barbara said, and that's very difficult. I can tell you as um, a practicing attorney, um, a lot of time it's like, I don't have time for this. This is too complicated. I don't have the, um, the willpower or the time to do this. This is an investment in you. So take a time out, relax, and then start working on these issues. And like I said, call us, we can guide you through this, uh, but it's an investment. It, it's an investment that you need to do on yourself um, because these um, situations where you're draining constantly your batteries, they're not sustainable. And we all have to do that commitment to ourselves and make that at least that initial investment. And after that, uh, it's easier. It's like going to the gym. It's the thing is like, the most difficult thing is going, <laughs> you know, once you get there, you know, you, you get going. And, and I encourage you to uh, see this as uh, the most difficult thing is coming to LCL. Once you're here, we're going to help you and try to get you back on track. Luz, that was excellent feedback. Thank you so much for adding your perspective on that and building on Barb's points, everything from the analogy of the smartphone battery um, with recharging your battery to thinking about consciously what are you taking on. Um, that, was, that was great. Thank you so much. I see. Yeah. Actually, I got my uh, battery, I mean, my, my battery, my video camera on at the end. <laughs> That's all right, we're, we're so glad you did. It's great to see you. So I see that we are coming up on um, our end of all scheduled time. I don't see that we have any questions. If you are watching this either live or on demand later, please reach out to us. Um, you can contact us 
Uh, contact information is on our website, lclma.org. We want to thank you for your time and attendance today. I want to thank my colleagues in their Berkshire Bar again for um, asking us to work with them on this program about well-being and practice management. Thank you all so much and have a great day. Thank you.